We love New York, don't we, Carmela? We do. Well, what do you love about New York? Well, there's so many things that I love about New York. And we do have children who live there or lived there. Well, this is true. But did you know they make wine in New York? I think I did know that. Okay, well, today we're going to learn more about winemaking in New York State. And we're going to try some reasonably priced Rieslings from the Finger Lakes to see what we think. All right. All sounds right, good. Let's do it. Hello, and welcome to the Wine Pair Podcast. I'm Joe, your sommelier of a reasonably priced wine, and this is my wife and my wine pairing partner in crime, Carmella. Hi there. And we are the Wine Pair. Woohoo! Okay, a quick orientation for those of you who may be new to the podcast. In each episode, we learn about and we taste and we give our honest reviews of three wines that are reasonably priced, which means under $20 each, and should be easy for you to find. And our podcast is made for people who want to learn more about wine and find new wines to enjoy and just want someone to talk about wine in a fun way that normal people can understand and we are so normal and we are normal and fun mm, mm-hmm. okay so if that sounds like you you are in the right place Great. and we're proud to say that we have been recommended by the editors of decanter magazine who call us fun irreverent Shatty. and entertaining okay carmel i'm just gonna say i'm still trying to figure out this new microphone and if i like it or not so if anybody out there in listening land is like, this microphone is awesome, How or this are they microphone gonna, is terrible, not, or don't, I don't care, just yeah, let us know. I think it's a big I don't Get care. Get over it, right? Get over right. it. I mean, unless they either can't hear you or you're like blowing them out of the water. I, know. I, I don't think, think it's that, either. I don't, yeah, I it's think, like a nothing burger. Is there such a thing as a nothing burger? Yeah. Okay. That's a saying. You never heard that saying? Never. All right. Well, speaking of nothing burgers, no, that's not true. Uh-huh. So Carmela, this week I thought we would try something new. Okay. What are we doing? <laughs> and that's... Highlighting wines that come from a region that people may not know make wine. Okay. I mean, like within the United States? Well, it could be the United States or all over the place. Like in the United States, we all know California makes a ton of wine, Mm -hmm, right? We do. And most people know that like this state makes wine and Oregon makes wine. A bunch of states make wine, right? Mm -hmm. And we all know that France and Italy and Spain, they make wine, right? Right. But there are lots of people who may not know that there are other states and countries where they grow grapes, grow wine grapes, and make wine. Ah. So like... Focusing on the good old U.S. of A, Carmel, okay. which is, you know, where we live, right? Mm-hmm. And this may be hard to believe, but guess how many states make wine? My guess is that most do. You, According to Wikipedia, or as I, I like to say, Carmel, huh? <laughs> every state, all 50 states make wine. Oh, okay, I would, yeah, I would pretty much, I don't want to, didn't want to like, you know, go all in, but I figured it was like most. But I mean, you know, it's like, did you know Nebraska makes wine? Well, I mean, I, I mean, come of, on. if somebody had said, do you think Oklahoma, Nebraska, I would say yes, just because I feel like people, yeah, because it could be like a vineyard, but somebody could just be making wine in their basement too. <laughs> I don't, I think these are professional. This I know, is more about but just to say. People can make wine anywhere. Okay, well, you probably already knew this because you are Wikipedia. So True. we're gonna we're gonna just ask a few questions. So, uh, the state that makes the most wine is California, and they make eighty four percent of all the wine that comes oh, from the U.S. Wow. So it's a lot. Um, guess where the second highest state of uh, of production is? Um, is it Oregon? It's actually Washington. It's oh, okay. the state that we're in. Five okay. percent. Wow, good for us. Yeah, five percent of the wine in the United States comes from Washington. Okay. Now who's number three? Oregon. No, New York. Oh no way. New York no is way. number three. I know. I was shocked to find oh, that out. I would too. not have guessed that. And they make three and a half percent of all the wine made in the United States, oh, which wow. I think is kind of shocking. And so next are they, are they... and the next is oh, Pennsylvania oh. and then Oregon. Oregon, I just thought differently of you. I know. Huh. But so now... Today and, I learned. T-I-L. Wow, wow, wow. wow. But, um, okay, can I ask questions about uh, you New can, York? Sure. I mean, I'm guessing these are... Why are you shaking your head? Because we're going to we're gonna talk about New York. Because you have a whole script. Exactly. And you don't want me to go off script no. because I'm going to ask you something that the, you're going to talk about eventually. Can we talk about New York in a little bit? Well, I thought this was like, can you believe we make wine in New York? Okay, but can we talk about New York wine in a little bit? Okay. Okay, because I got a few other fun facts to share. Okay. Okay. Did you know that Carmela, (laughs) did you know that California was not even the first place in the United States where wine grapes were grown or wine was made? I didn't know that. 
The earliest wines in the United States, Carmela, you should know this because you are Wikipedia, were made in places like Florida in oh. the 1500s mm. and Virginia and the Carolinas when they were early colonies. Oh, my god! Which kind of makes sense. But, you know, you just don't think about it. Right. Wow. And, and so today we're talking about, obviously, a state in the United States. But there are other countries where they make wine that you may not know of. So, for instance, Carmela, Russia is number 11 on the list of countries that produce wine. Okay. And Romania is number 14. Wow. And Mexico is number 37. And Japan is even number 23. So, like, all these things you don't know. So here's the, here's the reality. But they of make this. sake. And, yes, that's true. <laughs> but rice wine. But here's the great thing, Carmela. The grape thing? The grape thing about it is, because there are so many countries that make wine, we will never run out of topics to talk about in our Holy podcast. Holy cow, people. <laughs> what are we going to do when we run out of time? <laughs> <laughs> we'll never run out, Carmela. It'll be the forever but we, podcast. We're, it's gonna, we're gonna run out before the topics you, run out. I think you're right. Mm. You might run out before the topics run out. What about you? No, you, you might, might just run away. Oh, you uh, might be like, run out of here. You might be right. No. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> no. But you know what? This is fun. It's fun to learn about this because it's good. It, we like to be. We like to learn. We're lifelong learners. But also, you learn a little bit more about food and culture and cuisine and all that kind of fun stuff when you learn about. You know, you learn about these other countries, history, all that kind of fun right. stuff. Okay, I so, have so many questions. I know you do. So we're going to get back to that to the question at hand, which is to educate you and our listeners about New York wines. Mm -hmm. And again, it's the third largest producer of wine in the United States. You even knew that. Right. And we're going to focus on one of the wines which they are well known for and which is a great wine to focus on for fall. And today, as we record this, is the first day of fall. No, tomorrow is. Oh, okay. The At first 2 full day. The first full day. Is tomorrow. Okay. Well, whatever. You are Wikipedia. <laughs> And that wine, Carmela, by the way, is a dry Riesling, which Ooh, we really like. Yeah. And we have three dry Rieslings from New York State, all from the area of the Finger Lakes that we're going to taste today. Mm -hmm. And we'll let you know what we think and what we would pair them with and all that kind of stuff. But first... You got to do our shameless plug. That's right. So first, we want to thank you for listening to us and supporting our show. And if you haven't had the chance to do so yet, you know what? Right now would be a great time to subscribe to I our never podcast. I ever thought of a better time. No. And it's a free way to support us, mm -hmm. which is really we need nice. Support. I need support. In, lots of, of, in support. lots of ways. Mm. Uh, and thank you to all of you who have already subscribed we really appreciate you and another great way to support us is to leave a nice five star if you don't mind great wow. rating and review we on don't Apple ask for Pod much no not much you can do that on apple Podcasts. you can do that on our website there's other places you can do it we would really appreciate it and it's free carmela it's free how to, often to do you support get, us yeah to often do you get opportunities to support something for free I mean, not very often. That's right. And you can also... Follow, I don't know. I actually no. have no idea. I don't either. Okay. I, okay. Anyway. I figured I should just say that. You, yeah, thank Was you. that on the script? That thank, I, no, but it's good. Thank okay. you for saying that. Okay. I appreciate that. Okay, good. Okay. You can also follow us and see pictures of the wines we're tasting and trying today on Instagram at the Wine Pair Podcast. You can follow us on threads, which we won't do anything with, but that's fine. You can contact us on our website, thewinepairpodcast.com. And when you go there, you can sign up for our newsletter. And in about a week... Beginning of October, we'll send out of our, our October newsletter, and there'll oh. be recipes, and there'll be all sorts of fun stuff wow. in there. So sign up. Why wouldn't you want to sign up for that? It's also free, Carmela. Wow. Well, and I'll have you know, this is a total aside, but I'm on TikTok. <laughs> as what? What is it? As what? Baby, I don't know. Baby cakes lady? No. Carm. Carm. I think Carm. Carm on tip. TikTok. I can't believe there's no other Carm. I don't know. No, I think I'm the only one, and, and I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just on it because I should have done baby cakes. I should have. Why? You can still do it. I guess I can. Can you change your name? Of course you can. Oh, okay. Maybe you, I will. You, I don't. It was on a whim, name. but is, is the Wine Pair podcast on TikTok No, anymore? we are not on TikTok. I thought we were. We've never been on TikTok. Oh, my goodness. Okay. The reason I brought it up is I thought maybe, oh, Twitter. We Twi were on Twitter. We were on X. Now X. Okay, okay, can we get back I'm to the sorry. script? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because we haven't even finished our shameless plug. Well, actually, that was your shameless plug. Right. Like, I'm on and TikTok. And you can follow no, you Baby don't Cakes to. Lady on, oh. on Instagram as yeah. well. Wow. But here we go. Okay. As we do every week, we're going to tell you someone we think you should tell about the Wine Pair Podcast. And this week, it's super easy. We want you to tell somebody who either lives in, 
has visited or loves New York. Okay. How about that? I knew it. Send it to them. Send them this episode. Yeah, don't, actually. Don't even just tell them makes, about it. This makes perfect sense. Exactly. Yeah. Easy. I mean, sometimes you, I'm easy. like, what? I don't I understand the no. connection. Total and connection. Joe, yeah. like, that's weird. He's weird and he's yeah, dumb. Yeah, but that, that yeah. works. No, I'm with you. Okay. Thank you. No, Thank I'm you with you. Thank you for being so supportive. Yeah. You're welcome. I, it's a free thing to do. So. <laughs> it's free. It's free. It's free. Okay. Carmela, mm-hmm. we have been to New York a lot. We've yes. been many, 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 many times. Mm-hmm. But most of the time we have spent there is in New York City. In mm-hmm. fact, in Manhattan. Right. And you have family in upstate New York in an area called Red Hook, correct? Well, I don't know if they are there anymore, actually. Well, they were there. But yes, they were from there and spent. A, I spent time there as a kid. Yeah, and that's kind of straight up from New York City. Mm-hmm. And then there, we spent a little bit of time, too, in Ithaca, right. New York. Mm-hmm. And that is the place in New York State where the Finger Lakes are. Ah. And that's the area where the most of the wine country in New York is okay. from and where the wines that we're going to drink today are from. That was one of my questions. Now, the finger... Now, what was the question? Well, I was just like thinking <laughs> most of the wines must come from upstate New York. You are correct. Right. Because they, they don't have vineyards in New York City. I've been there. No, There's not many. not a lot of Not green. many. I mean, Central Park, you know, you're not going to be There might be grapes. wine grapes there. You think so? Maybe. Maybe. Mm, I don't know. No. The Finger Lakes area is named after the region where there are 11 long, thin lakes that run north and south and kind of look like... Fingers. Exactly. Such which a is weird called, thing. called the Finger so Lakes. Weird. <laughs> but there's only 11 of them. Only uh, 11. Only. There's 11. There's an extra finger, I guess. Okay. Oh, I get it. Weird. Yeah. Okay. And so now, again, many people, when they think of New York, they think of the big city of New York and the five boroughs. Mm-hmm. And that, of course, is the area with the largest population. But I think sometimes people are surprised to find that a lot of New York State's land is actually beautiful. It's forested. There's trees. It's really Mm -hmm. quite amazing. Mm -hmm. So in an article that I have in our show notes, which you can find if you go to our website and you look for this episode and you click on it and you scroll down, it describes the Finger Lakes this way. You ready for my, just my, my captivating? Yes. Are you ready for my exciting reading of this? I'm so ready. Here we go. A captivating landscape of rolling hills, crystal clear lakes, and lush forests, defined by its 11 slender finger-like lakes that run north to south, the Finger Lakes provide a microclimate ideal for growing grapes and producing world-class wine. It's like a meditation. Is that or did you fall asleep? I hope people don't fall asleep. I'm about to fall right to sleep. Okay, so this area is kind of in the middle of the state. It's south of Lake Ontario. It's between Syracuse and Buffalo. Mm. And there are a few reasons why this area is a good wine grape growing region. And it seems to mirror some of the wine growing regions in Germany. And that is probably also why they grow so many German varietals there. So there are Uh, a lot of... the Riesling. Yeah, there are a lot of German varietals that they grow in the... the, um, Finger Lakes. So first, the soil is chalky with good amounts of lime. And evidently, this is good for growing grapes in the European style like Mm. they do in Germany. Mm -hmm. And the second is the lakes help provide good drainage for the grapes and they help moderate the temperature. And so when it gets hot, they kind of keep things a little bit cooler. And when it gets cold, they kind of keep things a little warmer Mm. so that there isn't as much frost. And so oh. there you go. Oh, my goodness. So Kinda it sounds cool. like it's a, a great place to grow grapes. I would go there to grow grapes. Let's go and grow grapes. Oh, okay. It's like a tongue twister. To grow and grow grapes? Go grow grapes. Say that in, three times fast. Go grow grapes I in... It was rhetorical. What? I, I know, but I'm trying to think of... Okay, forget it. Okay. Did you know, Carmela, that they... Uh, you are Wikipedia, but did you know, Carmela... Why? How did they I get been, that name? Because you decided... Because you... I don't know. Uh, did you know, Carmela, they've been making wines in the Finger Lakes area for more than 100 years? Wow. But, I didn't. But, well, now you do. And now I know. Now you know. But the area only became an AVA, also known as an American Viticultural Area, in 1982. Hmm. I don't know why I, know. I shared that, but I just thought you should know. Okay. And there are about 100... It wasn't official then. Uh, it wasn't Official? officially re- recognized as this a, like a wine, wine growing, growing area. Yeah, like an official. Until well, the 80s. It's more like it was known as a wine growing area, but now it's like you can, it's a special designation. These are Finger Lakes wines. 
Institutes. Do you think they have wineries that people they must that yes. people go and visit and spend time at and go like a of destination? Course. Yeah, of course. Oh, cool. There is actually over 144 wineries. Wow. And uh, they produce about 54,000 tons of grapes per year. That's a hmm. lot. That is. And the Finger Lakes is most famous for its Rieslings, which again we're trying today. But they also make Chardonnay, they make Cabernet Franc, they make Gewurztraminer, they make Cayuga, and they make pi- uh, Pinot Noir. Oh. I almost said Pinot Noir. Oh, but Pinot, it's Pinot Noir. Noir. Okay. And there are other areas where they make wine in New York State as well. Evidently, there are wineries in Long Island and in the Hamptons where they make Merlot and Cabernet Franc. Mm. And they also make wines in the Hudson River and Upper upper Hudson areas. And they also make wine in the Champlain Valley, Niagara, and Lake Erie areas. So there's several areas in New York State where they make wine. But the biggest production area is the Finger Lakes. Mm, And again, they make Rieslings there. And that is their most prominent and best known and highest rated wines in New York come from this area. Now, now, will you want to visit there? Well, I've been there to Ithaca, but maybe if we go back again, I would visit their wineries. Really? Sure, and absolutely. And how far is it from the city? Oh, don't you remember? It's like a couple it's, hours. I think it's, more. It's quite, quite a, quite yeah. a drive. I yeah. mean, it's not. I don't like, know for sure, but yeah, yeah, it's not a little jaunt. No, you're, you're, you're making need a trip. To rent a car, That's probably right. right. I don't know if there's a train that goes up there. I, I'm sure there is, but we have not taken. We it. didn't. How about okay. that? How about okay. that? Okay. okay. Now, we're trying dry Rieslings today. That's kind of more our style, but they do make sweet and semi-sweet Rieslings in the Finger Lakes area. But on that note, I think it's time to learn a little bit more about the wines that we're drinking today. Okay. What do you think? Sounds great. Okay. So now, Carmel, I have to confession. Mm. All the wines that we're drinking today are around $20. Ooh. Okay. Normally, what we try to do is find wines that are under $20. Ah. But today, we, we found it, I found it a little bit difficult to find wines that were under $20. And that's going to happen all the time. Uh, but they're close. They're okay. close. What are they, like nineteen ninety nine? Well, that's under $20. Yeah. I would consider that under $20. But one's like 21 and one's like 22 Ah, oh, wow. So just a little bit over. But I will say, you know, like... Sometimes to find wines from specific regions, or even just because of inflation, right. it's going to be harder area. and harder to keep it under $20. Sure, but sure. we're going to try. We're going to try. But not today. All of them also should be relatively easy to find because I bought them all on wine.com. And New York, again, it produces a lot of wine. But because we're on the West Coast, it is a little bit harder to find New York wines. I'm sure on the East Coast, you can find tons of New York mm-hmm. wines. But again, you can find them on wine.com. You can find them online. If you go to a good wine shop or a specialty wine shop, they'll be able to get New York wines for you anytime you want to. Okay. And that all of these wines, they've had or have good ratings from reputable reviewers, and that means anybody other than James Sucklin. Uh, Basically so anybody. So that is your bar right there. That's right. Okay. And it's a low bar. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the first wine we're going to drink is called the Dr. Constantin Frank Dry Riesling. It's from 2021, and it received a 90 rating from wine enthusiasts. Mm. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's an unoaked wine, and it's fermented in stainless steel and spends about five months on the lees. Now, the lees means that they keep the wine in contact with things like the dead yeast cells that kind of end up in the bottom of the fermenting container. And that kind of sounds gross, but doing this often gives the wine a little bit of creaminess and can give it a little bit of a nutty flavor. So it's done on purpose as Mm -hmm, a style of mm -hmm. winemaking. Nice. Ooh, it sounds right up our alley. Yeah, and the winery says that the temperature where these grapes are grown is a little warmer, and so the fruit gets a little riper, and so it should have strong, fruity taste. The soil is silty, so the wine should have some good acidity and maybe have a little, like, stone flavor on it. So we're going to find out. Mm. And the vines, they say the vines date back to 1958. Okay. And Carmel, it's a screw cap. Exactly. Okay. Okay. The next wine is called Forge Cellars Kaywood Vineyard Dry Riesling. And this is a 2019, so a little older than the other two that we're Mm. going to be drinking. And it received a 91 from Wine Spectator. So that's a very good score. Mm -hmm. The winery was only founded in 2011, so it's still pretty new. Um, And they are recognized for making what they call bone dry Rieslings. Ah. Now, this is kind of interesting. The winery is led by two partners, one who comes from Gigondas, France, uh, which is a well-known wine growing area, and they claim to make their wines in the traditional handcrafted manner. So they harvest and sort their grapes by hand, they use spontaneous fermentation, and they ferment in tiny lots. But this is interesting. They use some sulfur, 
but they say they don't fine or filter, but they also say the wines are fermented in barrels. Mm. And so this mm. could have a little bit of a different flavor than a lot of dry Rieslings because mm. a lot of times white wines, other than Chardonnay, are you know, in stainless steel. Right. But these are fermented in oak. Hmm. And so I'm expecting a different, like creamy, maybe more of that, you know, Chardonnay kind of flavor. So we're, yeah. we'll see, because I know a lot of, we don't always love oak Chardonnay, but a lot of people do. So I'm curious to see if this is going to be a great wine for people who love a buttery Chardonnay. Right. Oh, that'll be interesting. Hmm. Now, Forge actually makes a number of Rieslings. So this one specifically is their Kaywood Vineyard. And that Kaywood Vineyard evidently was planted in 1970. Mm -hmm. So we're, we'll see. Again, could be, might not be our cup of tea in terms of type of wine. But again, mm -hmm. I think a good opportunity to see if there's a, you know, if people have a variety of different like styles that they like. If they like this one. Well, it sounds very different from very the first different. one. So very that'll different. be kind of fun to try two pretty different wines or two very different Rieslings. Fully agree. Now, the last one we're going to try is called Herman J. Weimer Dry Riesling. It's a 2021. They've had some very highly rated wines in the past. And it looks like this wine got a 93 rating from Wine and Spirits and a 90 from The Wine Advocate. This winery was started by a person who was born in Germany in a family in Mosul. Now, Mosul is a place in Germany that makes a lot of wines and is famous for Rieslings. And this family had experience in winemaking and they came to the United States in the late 60s uh, with wine making experience and this person bought some acres in 1973 and in 1982 the winery really came together and so they have some history of winemaking in this area and also from the old country huh. so that'll be really interesting yeah. and they also claim to hand pick and hand sort their grapes and press in whole clusters and ferment for four months using indigenous and wild yeast so we're seeing a lot of this indigenous and wild mm. yeast in these wines mm -hmm, too mm -hmm. which is interesting they also claim to make vegan low interventions wine and so these shouldn't be uh fined or filtered now i can't tell if this wine is oaked or not but my guess is it's probably not because usually again rieslings are not oaked but we're gonna see if we can tell mm. so what do you think i'm excited i think it's enough information i think it's time to start dwinking D wait that's weird dwinking no it's time to no, drink it sounds like you've already started drinking oh i might have My, but have i didn't you? did no. you no i okay. didn't okay i would never do that to you we wouldn't mm -mm. Oh. but those of you out there and listening then you may have already started drinking unless you're driving of course don't right. drink if you're driving mm -mm. pull over to the side of the road but you can have a recently oh, wow. yeah just pull along. on over pull and, over yeah. right now if you're on the freeway whatever just pull over <laughs> uh and just pull out a glass of wine wow uh no but if you have a wine like a riesling that you want to drink along with us and you know just kind of participate go yeah. for it you know you participation is key that's right so right. we're gonna we're gonna take a break and we're gonna try our first wine okay okay we are back and we are ready to try our first wine and so carmela as you smell it i will describe it but i will say first of all again it's a screw cap which we love and it comes in one of these long elegant riesling style bottles which i really like mm -hmm. okay. very pretty very it is very pretty um, okay, so the wine is called Dr. Constantin Frank Franck, <laughs> Dry Riesling. It's from the Finger Lakes in New York. This is a 2021. It was $19.99 at wine.com. It's 12% alcohol, 100% Riesling as far as we know. And wine enthusiasts gave it a 90 and James Suckling gave it a 91. Carmela, what are you smelling? Well, I'm getting a bit of that gasoline. I was going to. That was the first that? thing I smelled. Yeah. So for those of you out there in listening land, one of the famous smells of a all sauce Riesling or a German Riesling can be gasoline mm -hmm. or glue. It can smell a little bit like airplane glue, but that's a actually, or kerosene. Yeah. That's actually a very classic mm -hmm. smell. It mm -hmm. sounds terrible, but it is a classic yes. smell. But you know, who, who, I mean, I'm wondering out there, who of you out there actually liked it when your mom or dad went to the oh, gas dude. station? Oh, dude. And it smelled like gas. I don't oh, smell dude. that anymore, really, the gas. As or when a, you were a kid and there was like that modeling glue or whatever. I don't know. You like, kind of were like, it kind of smelled that good. Shit. I mean, it's a weird thing, but I remember being like, outside the window. Isn't it funny how sometimes you're just attracted to bad smells? Like you smell something bad and then you don't, you want to, you know, you don't want to smell again, but, but you, you want smell to smell it again. it again. It's like when you see people smell their fingers. Okay, that's, that's gross. Thing. Okay, that's a weird we've gone thing. way too far. Okay, that's way too far. But it's a thing. And then you go, oh, yuck. That guy just smelled his fingers. Like, okay, why? So, okay. <laughs> Other than kerosene and your fingers, anything else you smell? Well, there's a little bit of like lime or citrus on it. Yeah, there's think? something citrusy on mm -hmm, it, I think. Mm -hmm. What about you? 
Yeah, I'm getting that. I think there's something lemony or lime on it. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to see if I get a little bit of like stone fruit. Do I get a little bit of stone fruit? I'm wondering if I'm getting a tiny bit of peach. I'm not sure. Hmm. Well, okay. let's taste it and see what we think. Okay. Ooh. It's tart. It's nice, though. I'm kind of maybe thinking a little apple tart. Mm-hmm. Or pear. No, it's- more pear. Pear. Yes, yes. Um, I I like it. It's very refreshing and dry, but there's hints of fruit in it. Hints of like, um, like may, like, like a Granny Smith though. I okay. feel like. Okay. Okay. I mean, I get the pear too, mm-hmm. but what do you call the pear apple mix? A pear apple mix. A pear apple. A, uh, a papple. A papple. I thought there was a name for it. Asian pear. Sometimes. Asian pears. It yeah. kind of tastes like an yeah. Asian pear. Yeah. Like a crunchy Asian pear. Yeah. You said it. It's that... quite it's quite delicious. Mm-hmm. This is ice cold. We're having not ice cold, but it's refrigerator cold. It's mm-hmm. nice and cold. So it is very it's extra refreshing. It's pretty color. Mm-hmm. What else are you tasting? Mm. There's a little bit of rock on it. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, or and, and you can taste a little bit of that like kind of kerosene on it. Mm-hmm. But I think there's it's bitterness. It's almost a little bit more bitterness. Yeah, but not like um, not pithy like citrus. You know, no. I don't think it's like too much of that. I don't think there's a huge aftertaste that no. you get with like a pith. It's taste. lemony aftertaste, very yeah. citrusy. The other thing I'll say about it is, and I think we'll find this with the Rieslings, is they have a little bit of body to them. They're not a super thin, like mm-hmm. Pinot Grigio can be so thin. Right. They're not a super thin wine. They actually have a little bit of like body to them which yeah. is nice yeah i agree i agree what would you eat with this well that's a good question i i could see this very much as a fish and seafood wine a fried fish wine a spicy food wine i think this would be great with like indian food would mm-hmm. be really good thai food this is super versatile very and it's versatile. one of those ones that i will say it's a little, a little dangerous. dangerous it's very Wait, drinkable. what's the alcohol on it's only this? 12 it's okay. only 12 so okay. it's not bad yeah but it's definitely I can just see my mom like, ooh, I'm thirsty. Yeah, and down just it. down it. See your mom. No, I see because you doing it. Well, true, but like, you know, that, that was her saying when she would like come home from a run. That's a whole nother story. But anyway. You know, when you say too, this is a versatile wine, what I would say is this could be a nice summer sipper, but it's also a nice fall wine. I think it's a nice fall yeah, wine. Yeah, yeah. Well, even like this is sort of silly, but I feel like the bottle is kind of fall. Definitely. There's a maple leaf or some sort of leaf on it. Did mm. you notice? See? It's a leaf. Yeah, of some sort. I don't yeah. think it's a maple leaf, but yeah. I'm with you. No, it's a, but it's, it kind of looks fall-like, the picture and yeah. everything. So, yeah, yeah I, like it. I okay. can get behind that. Well, let's rate this wine. As a reminder on our rating scale, ladies and gentlemen, we rate on a scale of 1 to 10, and 7 or above means we're going to buy it, and a 4 or below means we're going to pour it down the sink, and a 5 or a 6 means, oh, okay, well, we'll drink it. We might look for something else, but we're not we're not going to buy it, but we do like it enough to drink it. Okay. Um, and so what rating would you give this wine, Carmel? You know, I'm going to give it an eight. I think I am too. I I think it's a little bit of a generous eight, but I'll tell you what, I am enjoying it. Like, oh. I would definitely drink this down, and yeah. I would serve this to people. I would, I would, I would bring this out on a, at a dinner party. I think people would really like it. I do so it's, too. It's a it, nice wine. Yeah, I feel like again, it's one of those crowd pleasers too. I don't think there's anything that you. It's not buttery. It's not a Chardonnay. It's not buttery, but it does have body. Right, I agree. But it's whoa, I just hit that. But I think that it's definitely a well-rounded wine too. Fully agree. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent with you. Okay, well, let's take a break, and we're gonna try our next wine. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we are back and we are ready to try our next wine. This is called the Forge Cellars Kaywood Vineyard Dry Riesling. It's from the Finger Lakes, New York again. Uh, 2019. This one was $21.99. I'm sorry, Carmela, breaking the bank. Mm. Wine.com, 12% alcohol again, 100% Riesling. And uh, Wine Spectator gave this a 91. And James Sucky Suckling gave, so gave it a 91. So this one, I'll just say a couple of things before we start drinking it. Now, remember, this is the one that we said is on oak that was oaked. Mm. Mm-hmm. And the bottle is not a Riesling bottle. It looks like a Chardonnay bottle. The second is that the wine is dark so in the dark. glass. Oh it God. looks like somebody... Doesn't did... look like a Riesling. No, it doesn't look like a Riesling. It looks like somebody didn't drink enough water and went Ooh. pee-pee. Ooh, this is what it's you say. It's almost orange. You are not hydrated enough. That's right. Now, when we smelled it, we sm- we cheated. We smelled it before we were on. But I'm getting some definite smells. You said sweet, but what else are you smelling? Well, it's like crystallized. It's like sh- crystallized sugar. Oh, that's interesting. You know, like 
It's um, or kind of like melon, like cantaloupe. Oh, okay. I was thinking more like honey. Uh, yeah, I'm getting uh, yep, honey for sure. I'm almost getting a smell of um, like a burnt caramel. Okay. Are you getting a little bit like a burnt, like a creme? Like what do they call that? Um. Oh, like a, a creme brulee. Yeah. Mm. I'm getting a little bit of apple maybe on it. Like you didn't you say apple? No, I didn't. I said cantaloupe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Those are similar. Almost like um some sort of apple tart or something. There's something really interesting on Different. it, though. It's, yeah, it's no, odd. I gotta, it's it, odd it, smelling. It doesn't smell... It, it just almost doesn't even smell like a wine. I wish I could... Put, I don't know if it... It kind of has like a honeydew or cantaloupe to me okay. for some reason. Well, I have a honey, but... Yeah, honeydew, honey okay. for sure. I'm totally getting behind that, too. But there's something very unusual about it. Well, let's try it and see what we think. Okay. I can taste it too. It's so different. I'm getting more melon now. It's like apple juice, like a very sweet apple juice. No, too, I'm saying melon <laughs> and, and I'm you're saying apple juice. apple juice. I'm getting the apple juice. It's sweet. You had said sweet. That was your first reaction. Yeah. It's pretty sweet tasting. I know this is yes. a dry Riesling, but it's pretty sweet. Are you getting sweet. the oak on it? Well, like I'm getting like that vanilla, not vanilla, that like kind of honey, honey flavor that there's a little bit of that honey flavor. Yeah, there's definitely honey on it. Kind of a crystallized, you know, when honey sits yeah. for a while. At the top of the it, bottle. Yeah, it kind of looks, it almost gets kind of grainy. Yeah. That's kind of what it tastes like to me. I'm with you. I'm also getting heavy duty. I don't know. I'm getting heavy duty Granny Smith apple now. Yeah. Aren't you? Mm -hmm. Like very tart apple. Yes, but it's still a kind of real sweet edge to it. For sure. Well, Granny Smith's going to be there very sweet. And there is some cream on it, too, maybe. I kind of feel like it almost doesn't have as much mouth feel as the last one. And the other thing is I was really expecting this to maybe be a wine that Chardonnay lovers would like. But I'm not actually so sure because it doesn't have that, like like you said, it has a little bit of creaminess, but it doesn't have that kind of Chardonnay butteriness. No, there's a little bit of spice on it, though. Okay, that probably comes from the barrels. Yeah, I am getting a little... Are you what getting spice? a little spice? Oh, let me see. <laughs> well, that, that was good spice. Like ginger? Gin I can almost say, like ginger? Maybe. Maybe that's what I'm kind of thinking of, like a crystallized ginger. Didn't your aunt used to like that? She liked that candied ginger. Yeah, the candy. Maybe it's a little like candied ginger. A little bit, a little bit. Hmm. It's, it's not... Ginger, though, is more of a bite. This does not have that kind of bite. A little bit, but maybe not. Arr, arr. Yeah, arr, arr. Okay, what food would you pair with this Forge Cellars? Wow, I don't know. Like, I actually am having a little bit of a hard time. It's pretty, it's so distinct. And sweet. You would really taste the wine more than anything, yeah. I feel like. I mean, you could probably do cheese. Like, I could see a cheese board with this. I'm almost thinking that maybe, but I'm kind of thinking almost like a fruit, like if, you know, a multi-course meal and after the main meal, you might have fruit. Ah, like a, like a... Um, fruit and nut, kind of like mm, that part, like pre-dessert or okay. even dessert. I could see I, this with dessert. Yeah, actually, I'm seeing, I actually am thinking, I guess I was thinking of like a, like a charcuterie, but without, I'm not seeing meats with it, but you're right. Like you could do nuts and chocolate. Mince meat. And, <laughs> Yeah. You know, like a yeah. mincemeat tart or something. Yes. It's such an interesting... It's really, I'm trying to think really what, different. Yeah, I'm trying to think what food I might have with it. I mean, maybe a fry... Like tempura? Maybe oh, tempura. Okay. okay. I think what, about maybe like, what about like fish and chips? I don't think... So. I, maybe. It's so lemony. Like it's got that... It does have citrus on it. This is a really unusual wine. Yeah. I would just say like it's worth a try just to try something very different. I don't... I don't usually... Rick, run into wines like this. I mm -hmm. think if you like sweet wines, you might actually really like I'm this so wine. I'm so anxious to hear what they say. What the flavor or, profile? Yeah, exactly. yeah, we'll get we'll get there. But let's see. How, we'll see how we did. What rating would you give this wine, Carmela? You know, I'm thinking about a six. We are like uh, once again this week. We are spot on because I'm thinking six. Like I just don't know if I want to risk it. Like I, it's one of those wines that I'm finding it kind of fascinating for a night like tonight, but. Would I go out of my way to serve it? I don't think no. so. This one is a, I think you're right. Like I, I'm tempted to give it a five because I don't know that I'd keep drinking it, but it's so intriguing that I probably am giving it a six just because it's intriguing. And it's not off-putting. Like it's not like you no, go, oh my God. All. Yeah, not but you all. don't, I'm not sure I'm enjoying it as much as I'd enjoy like that first class. Yeah, I agree. 
Okay, well, let's take a break and we're going to try our last wine. Okay. Okay, we are back and we are ready to try our last wine. Carmela, for the for the wine previously, you did say an interesting thing on the break that maybe there was a little nut. Well, I said it pecan because it was kind of because you pecan. said mincemeat and it did seem it's kind of a rich like pecan sound, seemed like kind of a rich nut, a little more yeah. oily, you know, and so like kind me. Of a, a little greasy. Wow. Are you a greasy, a greasy nut Italian. ball? Yeah. <laughs> no. All right. Let's talk about this next wine. It has a cork in it, but it is, again, this like slender Ooh, Riesling bottle. Mm-hmm. Very pretty, light colored wine. So we're kind of back to what we expected. This is the Herman J. Weimer Dry Riesling from the Finger Lakes in New York. It's a 2021. It was $22.99. Wow. Oh, my God. Broke the bank. Wine.com wow. is where we got it. Also 12% alcohol. And Riesling, 100% Riesling. And what are you smelling, Carmela? You had an interesting oh, okay. smell. I don't know why. The first whiff... I got you, though. <laughs> the first whiff was kind of like ketchup. I don't know why. But I'm there not getting that. There is almost something savory in the... Yeah, a little bit. I was getting like a ginger. That's what I was getting. Which, like yes, ginger. I do think it's got a little bit of spice, spice. like that. It's spicy mm-hmm. smell. It's a little spicy. And that maybe is where I'm getting a little pepper or something, too. Yep. Um, like a white pepper, a white pepper for our white riesling. But I don't know what else. There is some strange, like vegetable smell on it. Mm-hmm. Like I can't quite put my finger on it. Ketchup isn't bad. It's kind of like a uh, herby too, though. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Not like herby the the bug. Herby? No, it's actually Herman. That's the wine. Herman. Herman. <laughs> Well, let's try it. I'm having okay. trouble getting much smell out of it. Uh, now I'm just stuck on ketchup. Oh no. It's spicy. It's a spicy Ooh, wine. Almost a little effervescent. Mm-hmm. But mm. it's spicy. Ginger. I yeah. keep going like ginger. I'm getting a lot of ginger on it. Yeah. Kind of like raw ginger even. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like it's spicy. It's got, yeah, that spicy ginger kind of taste. Yeah. Yeah. I, this is another. The first one was so typical. Yeah. And these two are very different. I'm with you. They're different than what I expected. This is, um. there's something... It's got a little body on it. I will say there is a little bit of fruit, but I like appley kind of fruit, but I'm I'm not quite, I don't know how to describe it. It's it's kind of citrusy too, though. A little lemony, do you think? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. But it's I, just that spice at the end. It start, you're right. It starts out citrusy, maybe lemon lime almost. And I'm not getting any oak. I don't think this one's no, oak. No, I don't think it's oak either. Yeah. But then it just ends and it's ginger to me. It's yeah. it's. Good. It I, is good. I like it. It's yeah. different. It's I like very it. Very different for a Riesling too. Yeah. To me, this is like um, it's an intriguing wine. I don't know. Like it's so interesting. Mm-hmm. It's so I want to keep drinking it. It's really an interesting, kind of unexpected wine. It's right. It's like in a positive way. Yeah. It's like exotic. It's almost like an exotic dancer. No. It's almost wow. like an exotic wine. Don't you think it's kind of it's exotic? It's so exotic. Don't you think though? Wow. Okay, what food would you she gets all turned up, turned on, right? Forget it. What would you eat with <laughs> this? What would you eat with this wine? Carmelita. Mm. My little spicy wine. Wow. <laughs> spicy wine exotic dancer? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> no. Um, I think this um, would be good with fish. I think like a white flaky fish would be really nice with this. I mean, this is, it's a little bit sweet, but I do think. It is a little sweet. A little bit sweet, but I think you could do something. I think um, a delicate fish would be okay. I think you could do fried fish too. Hmm. What do you think? I'm going right to like Indian food. You like again. the spicy food. I think, I think it goes, but I think it goes with a specific type of spicy food. Okay. Actually, Thai food. Oh, this would go really well with like Thai food. Thai? Like a pud thai? Like a pud thai. Okay. Ooh, so spicy food, but I'd not, not like that. you wouldn't do it like Chinese. No, but you know, like if we were at Monsoon, so there's this restaurant oh, in Seattle, yeah. Monsoon, it's delicious. It's like, it's like a mix of, a uh, mix of Vietnamese mm-hmm. and French and it's mm-hmm. really, uh, the spices they use sometimes like are like this. This is a little bit like cumin. I, yeah. I could get, you know, like, do you think it tastes a little like cumin? A little bit. And you know what I got a little bit when you said that? I was thinking maybe a little cucumber. Mm. Maybe it's got a little smell and taste of cucumber. Maybe. Like mm-hmm. smell it's it like, again. It's very fresh. Maybe yeah. not. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's it's hard to tell. It's a little bit. I mean, it is. It's a little sweet. It is to be sweet. cucumber. It is. Okay. Mm. Uh, what rating? I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. We've had too much Riesling. What wow. rating would you give this wine? 
I think I'm going to give it a seven. Okay. I'm so intrigued by it, I'm giving it an eight. Okay. I would definitely buy it. This is a wine where I would be like, if there was somebody who I knew was into wine and was into like trying cool, different wines, I would want them to try this just to see what they think. They might not love it, but it's so intriguing. There's All just something these... so interesting to me about it. Yeah, and I want to say this would be a great like date night. You've been dating this person for a while and you just want to try three different wines. They're so different, but they're all so interesting. I don't know. I could see this as like a fun exercise. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> when you're exercising. Hey, hey. People yeah. say that all the time, though. This would be a fun exercise to try mm-hmm. these three wines. And three more. It's a great more. lineups. And two, two more. more. And, and one. one more. Now drink. Okay, Um, what wine are you, of these, are you finishing tonight? Well, I think for me, it's the first. Yeah. I'm going to go with Dr. Constantine. You like Dr. Constantine? I'll yeah. let you do that. I like that one a lot, but I'm going to go with Herman Wiener. Just to like, so we have, we don't have to share. Is it Weimer or Weimer? I don't know. Don't be a Weimer. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about the taste profiles expected from New York Finger Lakes Dry Riesling. This is exciting. And, okay, in Wine Folly says the general tastes are lime, Meyer lemon, pineapple, apricot, orchard pineapple. fruits. You know, pineapple's good. Orchard fruits like nectarine, honey crisp, apple, pear, honeycomb, ah. ja- jasmine, lime peel, petroleum, rubber, diesel fuel, ginger ah. lemonade oh, we're doing great so now the dr constantine the winery says delicate and elegant harmonizing lemon zest granny smith apples we i, I think we definitely said that we did well, Min- we said lemon mm-hmm. mineral stoniness mm-hmm. you said Rock. stony mm-hmm. with fresh citrus and nectarine from the seneca vineyards wow we are good and wine enthusiast says opens with a lifted aromas of white peach lemon lime and florals with a honeyed underbelly we definitely got did we say honey or was that the other one uh, the second one, there was a lot of honey going and then, on. And then it says laser-like lemony acidity and a slightly chalky texture. Okay, no, we, we did really well. Okay, so Forge Cellars Winery says a signature profile dominated by herbs okay. and spices rather than fruitiness. Mm. Okay, we definitely had yes, that. Yes, yes. Uh, the 2019 vintage combines a unique macadamia nut and almond nose. Good job. I know, but I said pecan. I know, but you said nut. Energetic, with an energetic saltiness backed by classic herbal quality like in Kwood. Okay, mm. Wine Spectre just says a bright, high-pitched version with honeysuckle and chamomile wow. notes leading the way for white peach and lemon curd details. A subtle talc, talc thread adds tension to the finish. Like talcum powder? That's kind of weird. Like chalk? That's weird. Hmm. And then Herman J. Weimer, Dry Riesling. The winery says, Fragrant essence of spring blossoms sets the stage for a succulent palette of early fruit balanced with refreshing Christmas. They don't, they're not even saying Refreshing specifics. Christmas? Crisp, crispness. Oh, sorry. crispness. Okay. okay. De Panua Wine says, Layers of citrus, stone, and tropical fruit are underpinned by taut acidities and a clean mineral finish um okay so no ketchup <laughs> no ketchup but this is what they said it will also appeal to fans of off dry white wines which is true because it's like sweet mm-hmm. an amazing pairing with spicy cuisine Whoa! thank you very much good job good job woo, okay. woo. so what do you think about new york or these things i'm really i've really enjoyed this episode honey <laughs> you know what i've enjoyed it too I'm so glad. Shall no, we do it again? We shall. And we will. I, I would love to do same other wines time, next same week. Place. Yeah, next week. I would love to do more wines uh, in New York because, mm-hmm. it's again, it's third largest wine producer and we don't even and really know so about it. And we spend so much time there. I know. It's funny. Huh. And I'm excited to try wines from other areas where, you know, you don't normally think of wines. Mm-hmm. I will say they're hard to find. in the On the West Coast. And hard to find even on places like wine.com and that kind of stuff. Mm. So we have to search. Ah, all so right. The easy to find part really isn't. Say that again. The easy to find part really isn't part of this episode. No, I, I no. This one it is because I bought them all on wine.com. And so from that perspective, so these, e- particular these specific bottles, wines, you can I'm find. saying like trying to find a wine from Indiana might be difficult. Okay. Or okay. Michigan or something. It might ah. be, you're going to have to dig around to find those. Okay. All right, Carmela. Well, it's just about time for us to go. But before we do, we do want to thank you again very much for listening to us. If you've made it all the way through, you deserve a special prize. And you know what that special prize is, Carmela? Subscribe. That is your special prize. Wow. Subscribe to the podcast and leave us a rating and review. You're welcome. I don't think Congratulations. people are going to buy that, honey. You're well- 
They, they don't have to buy it because it's free. How about that? It's a free way to support us. No, it, we really, we really, we really would appreciate it if you would support us that the way. The reasoning's going right to Jeez. your head. Oh gosh. Okay. And if you have a wine that you'd like for us to taste or a wine region, you're like, guys, gals, people, you really need to try these wines or this wine region. Let us know. We would love to hear from you. And you can reach out to us at joe at thewinepairpodcast.com. Or you can go to our website. Carmel is laughing at me. Thewinepairpodcast.com. And you can join our email newsletter. But you can also wow. leave us a voicemail. And you can contact us there. And we would love to hear from you. And then again, next time you listen. If you didn't do it this time, next time you listen, drink along with us. Super fun way to right. participate. And you get participation points. Right. That's it's a big. fun exercise. I mean, that's, you know, and they're free. You, you might get a little PTSD because because you'll think about, oh, participation points in like grade school. Yeah, like, when oh, you're like, oh, oh my God, I didn't I get, get on the participation. Know. But no, we don't grade you that way. No, we don't. everybody gets an A. Right. No matter just what. For, just just click the button to subscribe. And, and you get an A. Right. All right. Very a good. plus. <laughs> okay. Well, with that, we're going to sign off. And thank you again. And we'll see you next time. And as we say, life is short. So stop drinking shitty, bitty, witty wines. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And the happy ending at the end of our story. Too much.